Hi, my name is Robert. Today we'll be presenting on my research that I did in the Frank Lab with um, Dr. Scott Burks as well. Um, this research is entitled Cytosol Calcium Transients During Pulse Focus Ultrasound uh, Generate Reactive Oxygen Species and Cause DNA Damage in Tumor Cells. Okay, so first I'm going to give a bit of background on why we're doing this research and PFAS in general. So our lab works with animal models that have um, tumors, flank tumors in the past. And we have seen both um, DNA damage via tunnel positive staining and apoptosis um, in these models. So we were trying to figure out on a cellular level um, why this was happening. So this is an image of what the transducer kind of looked like that we were using. And um, at the focal point, we would treat our cells in either a plate or a Eppendorf tube. Um, and here are our parameters listed below. So the first thing I tested for was if in a, these cell culture models we would get um, tunnel reactivity and apoptosis. Um, and what we saw was we got tunnel reactivity in most of our cell lines and uh, we didn't get apoptosis in any of our cell lines. So the cell lines tested were the B16 melanoma, the MDA-MB231 breast cancer and 41 breast cancer, and the C6 glioma. So in um, every line except the glioma, we did get DNA damage, but we um, did not get apoptosis in any of our lines, as you can see from both the images and the graphs shown. The first possible cause we looked at was an uh, increase in uh, calcium levels after PFAS. So we've seen this with other processes, such as um, NF-kappa B increases after PFAS, which is a calcium different process. Um, so here we're looking at um, trace images on the top. Um, so our traces were done by previously loading cells with fluorophore and then um, live cell imaging. And as you can see, um, all of the cells had an increase in uh, calcium levels during PFAS treatment and uh, C6 had a significantly least increase. Uh, then below, what we're seeing is um, our tunnel fluorescence after BAPTA, which chelates calcium was added. So what we saw was that there was actually no increase in tunnel after PFAS treatment um, when we had BAPTA added, suggesting that this is indeed a calcium-driven process. So next we looked at um, superoxide formation uh, after PFAS to determine if this played a role. Um, high levels of calcium can enter the mitochondria and cause uh, possible issues with mitochondrial me metabolism when we're trying to figure out if this is what was happening. Um, to do this, we used the mitosox assay, and um, what we determined was that PFAS did indeed cause an increase in superoxide formation. However, when BAPTA was added, um, this increase was not seen in any of the cell lines. Um, going further, uh, we tried to inhibit uh, superoxide formation by adding mitotemple, and we actually did not see any difference from our PFAS-treated controls. Um, so then at this point, uh, we looked at hydrogen peroxide because mitotemple is a superoxide dismutase, which, can uh, which converts um, superoxides to hydrogen peroxide. So we thought maybe this is the next step in the process and is why we did not see a decrease. So next we did a hydrogen peroxide assay. Um, on the left, you're seeing the fluorescent hydrogen peroxide um, indicator and the images and PFAS did indeed increase the levels of hydrogen peroxide. Um, when we added BAPTA, PFAS did not increase the levels of hydrogen peroxide, and when we added mitotemple, um, the same increase was indeed seen, suggesting that this was the pathway. Um, so this kind of brings us to a relation to DNA damage, as hydrogen peroxide can leave the mitochondria. Um, so we were looking at tunnel fluorescence on the bottom here, and we saw that when we added Trolox, a hydrogen peroxide inhibitor, um, we did not see any increase in tunnel uh, from PFAS, suggesting that hydrogen peroxide is indeed the last step here and is what causes the DNA damage. Finally, um, I looked at differences in the C6 cell lines since it behaved very differently. <laughs> so first I looked at baseline cytosol calcium levels and C6 had a much higher um, baseline calcium level. Um, since this was a calcium different driven process, this implies where a lot of the differences might have originated. Um, we didn't see any difference in ER calcium levels. Um, our baseline superoxide and hydrogen peroxide levels were both higher in the C6, um, suggesting possibly a higher number of mitochondrial calcium uniports. Um, and then also we saw that our C6 had lower baseline tunnel. Um, this may be due to DNA repair mechanisms or something else. It still has to be determined. In conclusion, um, we saw that PFAS increased DNA bit damage, but not apoptosis, and this was mediated by a ROS-based pathway. 
Um, we also saw that not all tumor lines would behave the same. And um, what this has suggested to us is that tumor apoptosis may come from um, some other systematic signaling. In the future, I would like to examine more tumor lines um, to help determine why these cell lines respond differently, and a bigger sample size would be very helpful for this. Um, that's it. Any questions?